Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Open Core Legacy Patcher is a brand new version available, 1.3.0. This update comes out right after macOS Sonoma 14.2 is released, and it includes a very important note for 3802 based metal GPUs from 2012 to 2014. So we got to talk about that first, and we've got plenty of machines to do it, eight test devices to be able to make sure your update installs fine. We've got five Sonoma devices, including a newly added 2014 Mac with Kepler based GPU. We got a to cover let's do it together and jump in and get started okay we're going to go over the 3802 base metal gpu issue first but then after that we're going to go through a live demo of updating open core legacy patcher on our mac pro to make sure you can walk through the entire process and you can watch it live and then we're going to go over a couple questions that i received over twitter and my patreon members a couple of really good questions about the update process one thing i want to call out here is this note i always make sure to tell you to check the github first to make sure there's any note but that's becoming not as important anymore because the application can do it itself you can see here the new update window includes the information in the github so you can see right away without even checking this process works by checking every every time the open core legacy patcher application is started so and that's how you can see that there's an issue right away so you can open up the app before you even start the update process to see what's going on so let's look right at that 3802 GPU issue. This was introduced in 14.2 beta 2 and newer versions. 14.2 was released. So the developers were right on top of this and got this issue fixed right away before anybody would be able to install the public release. Then the next issue is, is that there was a resolved mismatch CF bundle executable binary named for the Kex. And this resolves a proper tree binary protection. This was fixed by Corp Newt. And the applicable extensions are Core Crypto, Core Capture LCAP, and IO80211 LCAP. And that covers the change log of the 1.3.0 update. Now let's jump into the live demo of updating to the latest version. Our demonstration Mac here for the 1.3.0 update is a 2013 Mac Pro desktop. This Mac Pro is running Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.2.1 and is running Mac OS Sonoma 14.1.2, so it's ready to go for the 14.2 update. Now I'd like to do a full demo walkthrough so you can see how the update works in, in the installation. Plus, this Mac Pro needs the KDK or the kernel debug kit so you can watch how that full process works. Now, Patreon supporter Norman asked a really good question. He said, what about the new automatic update system when it goes out there and gets the KDK? Does it also update the application? Now that is totally separate from the actual application update process. This will be like a two pronged approach demo. I'm going to start the update without first updating the application. So I'm going to close the app so you can see how this works and it's a separate process, but I'll still be able to update the application after the KDK part is downloaded. We're going to go into the library folder and then we're going to go into the developer folder. And then we're going to go into the KDK's folder. You'll see the folder after the KDK has been installed. When the 14.2 one will be downloaded, it'll just sit here and it will not make the folder until the Mac comes back up. Then it'll install. Then it'll use those, create the snapshot, and then reboot and it'll be good to go. So that's how that process is going to go. And that's why I'm going to leave this folder open so you can watch that happen live. Many of you have asked, does my Mac need the KDK? Now there's a very specific set of Macs that need the kernel development kit to get those specific drivers for your particular model. So let's take a look at that list now. If you have a Mac with a dedicated Intel GPU or NVIDIA GPU, you do not need the kernel debug kit. You only need the KDK if you have an Intel GPU or if your Mac has the USB 1.1 controller situation. So that would be anything 2010 or 2009 and lower, depending on your Mac model. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start the update so we can kick off that launch process. So we're going to watch how this launch daemon here, this is the one that does a watch path on the system volumes update P list in this volume. So this is what it's looking for. When it notices a change here, it thinks it's getting a software update. So we'll go here to the system settings and we will go into general and then we'll go to software update and then we will check for the update 13.36 gigabytes. And you can see the update modified here is today at 1107 AM. So what we'll do is we'll click update now and we'll click agree. 
and it's immediately starting to download. And look at that. We've got a date modified at 3.44 p.m. and the launch daemon has kicked off, opened up Open Core Legacy Patcher, and it says that the patcher has detected that you are downloading 14.2 update and it needs to prepare the system for the update and will download any additional resources it needs. The machine comes up from the 14.2 update. We have to answer this. Even though it's going in the background and downloading, we have to answer this to make this go away. So we will click OK. And now it's downloading the 14.2 KDK. And when it's done downloading, you'll see it here. But this is showing you how the KDK process does not update Open Core Legacy Patcher. That is a separate process. So we're going to let this go and we can still update Open Core Legacy Patcher when this is finished. But I wanted you to see how this process works live. And again, the developers in Macula did a fantastic job engineering this process to be able to keep an eye, watch for changes in the system, kick off a whole different process to download the KDK manually to make sure it's stored safely. So next time we come back up for the update, all the files are there that we need. Because the bottom line is for some machines, the base drivers for Wi-Fi are inside this kernel development kit. If the patcher can't get those files needed, that's what caused all those issues with 14.1. This is that system that was built to protect against that from happening. So we'll let this finish down. Now keep in mind, this might be a little bit slow because we are downloading them both at the same time. So depending on your internet speed, it might take a little while, but that's okay. Just let this do its process and then we will walk through the demo to be able to update to 1.3.0. And that's it. And it's gonna move it right to this folder. And there it is, give it a second. Now it's done. So Open Core Legacy Patcher now is finished. It now has stashed the 14.2 kernel development kit here. So it's ready to go once the system comes back up from the 14.2 update. Now that we know that that system does not update the application, we have to do that now. So we're going to basically cancel this download and then we're going to let this finish because we want to be able to make sure 1.3.0 installs with the EFI bootloader and the root patches properly first with no issues before we install 14.2. So let's type in our password here. Now the update is complete. We are now on 1.3.0. Click on yes. And we want to be able to install it to disk. And we'll install it to our internal hard drive and EFI. Password. Yes. We want to be able to do the root patching because we can see that the last version we installed was 1.2.1 on November 30th. So we will start the patching with 1.3.0 and we will click on yes for our password. So you can see here, I scrolled up on the update that it already found the 14.1.2 KDK and that matches the OS update that we're on currently. So that's fine. It did not need the 14.2 KDK yet. So now everything's all set to go. So we are going to reboot to make sure everything goes okay on 14.1.2 and 1.3.0 Open Core Legacy Patcher. All right, we're back in. Let's log in. We are looking great. We've got a transparent menu bar. We've got a transparent dock. Everything is looking really well. We're still going to fire up Open Core Legacy Patcher to make sure that the patches are installed. We can click on post install root patch and we should see all applicable patches are already installed on December 12, 2023 and 1.3.0. Again, the point of doing this before the update is to make sure that 1.3.0 is running okay on your hardware first. Let's say something happened or something's not working right. Then we can focus on what the changes 1.3.0 may be introduced to the system before we add an unstable element of 14.2 next. If we did have an issue, we would pause, try to troubleshoot what the problem is. And then once that's resolved, then we can make the jump to 14.2. So now that we got a stable system on 1.3.0, we are ready to go for the 14.2 update. So we can go back into software update and we can get that update started again. Click update now, agree, and there it goes. And you could see that the launch daemon did kick off and we got another edit here. So it did check and it said, I already have the 14.2 KDK, so I do not need to download it again because we already got it. So that's a really nice process. So we are picking up the download here. We will let this install. Okay, we will come back to this Mac Pro when it's done installing the update. We are gonna now go over all the different hardware models to make sure that the update installs properly. 
Okay, the first demo model that I want to go over is our 2017 15-inch MacBook Pro. And this one is important because it's got the T1 security chip and it's also got the touch bar and touch ID at the same time. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that after installing the update, touch ID works properly. I've got touch ID set up on this machine, so let's make sure it works okay. And there it goes, works properly. So that's really good. The next thing I wanna check is to make sure that the touch bar works properly. I've got switch control set up here so you can see the touch bar. You can click enable touch bar or toggle the touch bar and you can see the touch bar actions. You can actually use them right on the screen like this, which is really kind of cool. If the touch bar was not working, this would be blank and you would not see anything on the touch bar. If your touch bar is not working, that's because Apple removed Embedded OS, the small operating system that is used to run the touch bar from macOS Sonoma. So the way to get that fixed is to install macOS Ventura on your device, whether it's a secondary partition, you can even boot it up off an external drive and then it'll install embedded OS and then you're fine. You just have to have it installed one time and you'll be okay. To prevent that from getting ruined in the future, when you go into disk utility and you have select all devices checkmarked, do not delete the top level drive. If you erase this top level drive, that also erases embedded OS and you'll be stuck in that situation where your touch bar does not work. So what you have to do is click on Macintosh hard drive and only erase the Macintosh hard drive volume group and it'll leave embedded OS in there for the touch bar to work properly. So that takes care of the touch bar situation. So for this 2017 MacBook Pro, everything's running A-OK -okay on 1.3.0 and Mac OS Sonoma 14.2. Next up on the list is our new entry into our macOS Sonoma test fleet, mid 2014, 15 inch MacBook Pro with a Kepler GPU. Now this is important because this Mac is in that list of Macs that have the issue where you have to make sure you're on 1.3.0 before installing 14.2. I did go through that process. We are fully up to date on 1.3.0 and I installed the 14.2 update and zero issues. This system is running great and that that's exactly how that patch process was supposed to work. So next up is our late 2012 Mac Mini. This is one of the oldest metal compatible Macs available. This is also important because it's running the Intel iGPU and it is on that list for machines that need that 1.3.0 update. So we made sure we updated 1.3.0 and we updated a 14.2, no problem whatsoever on this late 2012 Mac Mini have a non-metal GPU Mac running Sonoma. And this is important because this does not have a metal compatible GPU. And this MacBook Pro does need the KDK and it has the AMD Radeon 6770M GPU. Now keep in mind for the 2011 MacBook Pros, that is already usually disabled via NVRAM because of all the problems with that GPU and it's running off the Intel. So if we go into the library developer folder, we can see that it is getting the KDKs properly here. So we're good to go on that and everything went good on that install for 1.3.0 and 14.2 and this system is running great. Now let's jump over to our macOS Ventura, Monterey, and macOS Big Sur device. Now let's talk about macOS Ventura. This demo system is a mid-2015 15-inch MacBook Pro. And we want to talk about Ventura because, in my opinion, Ventura is the workhorse of the unsupported family. It is now in security update mode, and Apple is not going to make any more major changes to the OS, which would cause normally cause headaches for the dev team like macOS Sonoma is doing right now. So if you want a solid OS, macOS Ventura, macOS Monterey, is with that and you're still security supported by Apple. We updated to the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.3.0 and everything went okay. And we updated to the latest version of Ventura, which just came out yesterday, December 11th, which is 13.6.3, build number 22G436. Everything went fine and this system is running great. Next up, let's talk about macOS Monterey. macOS Monterey is right up there with Ventura as a reliable system. And this Mac is an early 2013 15-inch MacBook Pro. And we are running the latest version of Open Core Legacy Patcher 1.3.0. That installation went A-OK. -okay. And the update to 12.7.2, 21G1974, that just came out yesterday with Ventura and Sonoma, installed A-OK -okay great with no issues whatsoever. And finally, the last supported operating system that Open Core Legacy Patcher supports is macOS Big Sur. The final version of macOS Big Sur was 
7.10, build version 20G1427. Apple is no longer supporting macOS Big Sur and will no longer release security updates for it. And that is why I can no longer recommend installing macOS Big Sur for your main device because it could be vulnerable to malware or different security vulnerabilities. But it still runs okay and it's still supported by OpenCore Legacy Patcher. I've mentioned this in the past, but if you have a metal compatible GPU, Mac OS Big Sur is one of the unique operating systems, and you might have heard me talk about this before, that does not does not require root patches if you have a metal compatible GPU. And that was one of the really nice things about it because Apple left those drivers inside the operating system so it doesn't need to be patched. Okay, we're back to our Mac Pro and the 14.2 update installed properly. Let's click on OK for the automatic root patches to be able to be installed. From the launch daemon, we'll type in our password here and click on OK. The root patches have started to install and you can see here that the 14.2 KDK package was found in our developer KDK folder and it's going to install that now. While that's installing, it'll be creating a new folder in that same directory and then we will be able to continue on to the patcher. Okay, the KDK is now installed. You can see that it created a folder right there and now it's going to take those drivers and then merge them into a new snapshot for our root patching. There's all the drivers and the texts. Now it's gonna rebuild the kernel cache and then we'll be able to reboot. Okay, that's complete. Let's click on reboot and then restart. So everything went well for 14.2 update on our Mac Pro. Let's look at another problem that we found in the 1.2.0 OpenCore Legacy Patcher update. The recovery system is still not working. Let's take a look at that. Okay, here we are after holding down the option key, we can see our EFI boot. So we'll click on our EFI boot and then we will continue holding and now we can hit the space bar. Now all we need to do is tab over or click on recovery and then it should start to boot into macOS recovery blood. But ever since 1.2.0 open core legacy patcher, that has not been working properly. So this is why it's very important to have your USB installer drive ready to go at any time. Because if you have problems booting, you're gonna be unable to boot into recovery right now and you're gonna have to boot off of that USB installer. Then you can get into Ventura, Monterey or Sonoma recovery with the USB installer to do anything like, for example, if you need to be able to revert the root patches back or do some repair. So keep that in mind uh, going forward until we see that get fixed. At every Open Core Legacy Patcher update video, I would like to make a shout out to McCullough, Dina K, and all the developers that work on Open Core Legacy Patcher and all the amazing work that they've put into this product. If you have used this and you have the means, there is an Open Core Legacy Patcher open collective that you can visit if you would like to contribute to the developers so they can get the testing hardware, which is now up to 73 different Mac models to be able to test against. And the money that goes into the Open Collective will go to being able to buy the hardware needed that are supported by Open Core Legacy Patcher. So again, take a look at that and I'll put a link in the description. Thanks again for watching this video. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.